today? Hi, I'm Sarah Gilman. Sarah Gilman, how are you doing today? I'm good, how are you doing? I'm wide awake and I'm ready for this. <laughs> <laughs> now tell me about the part of Daphne and Velma. We have a new movie coming out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Daphne and Velma is um, it's a new movie about how Daphne and Velma from Scooby-Doo met originally. They start as internet BFFs who meet in real life when Daphne moves to Velma's town and starts going to her school and it's about them becoming friends and overcoming all their trials and tribulations as they try and solve a mystery. How long did it take for the movie to be made? It took us about a month to film altogether, about seven shooting days. Seven shooting days? We did. 17, oh my gosh, 17. <laughs> to, make a re to make a feature in seven days, I, I don't know how you do it, <laughs> sorry. Now, will Scooby make an appearance in this movie? He will not. This is solely about the two girls. Well, how about the mystery machine? Nope. Just Daphne and Velma. <laughs> now, uh, tell me about the chemistry between you and the other people that's on the movie. Yeah, so Sarah and I actually never auditioned. Sarah plays Daphne, Sarah Jeffrey. We never auditioned together. We met for the first time in the airport in Georgia where we filmed the movie. And uh, it's, we had chemistry right off the bat. We were really lucky. Um, we're almost like, it just kind of came together. We're like sisters. We, we fit together like Daphne and Velma in real life. I'm very sassy, sarcastic, and, and she's more like fun and just happy and, and together, which just makes a really great dynamic. Have you watched Scooby-Doo before this movie was made? Oh my, yes. It was part of my DNA growing up. I, every day, was watching Scooby-Doo on Cartoon Network, of course. What are your favorite Scooby-Doo moments? Um, my favorite episode is the one where they're in like the swamp and then the guy with like, I don't know the guy's name. Who does that, Is there ever a name for the villain? There's never a name for the villain, really. But it's just like, I just love the chase scenes when they're all like running in synchronization and the, the random dance moments. And I just, I love Scooby-Doo so much. <laughs> what was your favorite part about filming this movie? Um, really the people. I mean, it was so fun kind of trying to recreate Velma and playing with this iconic character, but I think at the end of the day, the cast and crew were really what kept everyone going. We had really long night shoots, and, and everybody's morale and kind of just spirit and belief in this movie kind of came together and made an amazing time. Can I give us a, a good Velma line today? <laughs> How about Jinkies? <laughs> That's a very good one. <laughs> now, uh, do you have any future projects coming up after this movie is released? Uh, right now, I'm just heading back to school. I go to USC for film and TV production. So I'm just going to go back to school and see what's next. Oh, that's very good. <laughs> How long are you going to go uh, back to school for? Uh, I have one more year left. I'm a senior now. You're a senior now? Yeah. What are you going to do when you graduate? Hopefully keep acting. That's the plan. Maybe direct and produce one day. <laughs> direct and produce. Now, what kind of movies would you like to make? Um, I'm really into dark comedy. I love dark comedy. So anything dark comedy would be amazing. Maybe a remake of Seinfeld. Maybe you remake a sign film. <laughs> Thank you for your time today. Thank you so much. Who do we have here today? Hi, I'm Jennifer Tisdale. How are you doing today? I am very happy to be here. I'm happy to be here too in Chicago. <laughs> Even though it's freezing outside, it is insanely hot in this room, so you know, don't mind our blotchiness. <laughs> exactly. Now we have Daphne and Velma here that's coming out in a few months. Tell us some more about that. Um, Daphne and Velma is this really amazing film that my sister Ashley and I produced uh, that is based on the girls from Mystery Inc. And it is, you know, a little bit of their origin story. It's how they met before they joined the rest of the gang and really how their friendship evolved and developed. Now, what was it like to get the, how was the process of casting? Casting um, was intense. Uh, you know, you're sitting here with two of the most iconic characters really in the world and really making sure that you had actors that could carry that weight of that was important. And I think we did a really great job in finding Sarah and Sarah because I think their version of Daphne and Velma is really inspiring and cool. And like, I want to be friends with them. Now, uh, tell me, do you have any funny stories uh, working with these two? You know, it was really fun working with the Sarahs, as we say, because uh, we were on location in Atlanta. so. We're together all the time, and you really become a family. And when you're not on set, you're shopping together or eating dinner or discovering new things. So I really feel like we walked away from this as one big family. Did you watch Scooby-Doo when you were younger? Uh, who didn't watch Scooby-Doo when they were younger, right? I mean, I loved Scooby when I was a kid. And my mom Scooby, when, you know. So it's just really, like, fun to kind of take something that everyone in the family knew and loved and bring it to 2018. What was your favorite part of making this movie? 
I think my favorite part was um, the casting process and picking out their clothes with Carousel. <laughs> Um, I really enjoyed kind of helping shape who these girls are. Now, can you tell me a good scene that could have happened in the movie? A good scene? Yeah. Yes. My favorite scene or? Yeah, favorite scene. Um, I think my favorite scene, uh, without spoiling too much, takes place in the principal's office when they get stuck on something that is called the conflict couch. Uh, you'll understand more when you see it, but it, it's a really fun scene. That's a good one. Now, uh, Sarah told me that Scooby-Doo would not make a parents in this movie, but do you have any good Scooby lines that you liked when you were watching Scooby-Doo? I mean, I think my favorite obvious, like, Chinkies. I mean, who doesn't love that, right? Exactly. <laughs> now, do you have any closing comments uh, for the movie that's coming out in a few months? Um, I think that you will all love this version of Daphne and Velma. It's coming out May 22nd. Go see it, buy it, and let us know what you think. Alrighty, thank you for your time. And now here I'm with with Susie. How are you doing today? I'm good. How about you? I'm wide awake. <laughs> now you directed the movie Daphne and Velma. Tell us more about that. Um, so I directed Daphne and Velma, the origins movie of the girls from Scooby Doo, and it was an epic experience translating a cartoon that I grew up into live action. Oh, that's very good. <laughs> now, uh, do you have any funny stories with uh, Sarah since you've worked with her for this movie? Yes, I mean, I think both Sarahs are wildly talented. Um, Sarah Jeffrey has so much heart and creates such nuance to Daphne. And then Sarah Gilman is just a master of improv. So I think one of my favorite stories is um, we had about half an hour to shoot in this warehouse type space we found at the school, and we were going to use it for a chase sequence. I wanted to do... Um, to riff on the chase sequences in animated films that always have the same background, but like people running and running and running against the same background. So we have the girls doing that. And then in the space, there was like two doors. So then we got to do the hallway of doors, which was, this is all like, we have half an hour, think fast. What can we capture? And I was like, we could get the hallway of doors. So we get the hallway of doors with these two doors. Sarah goes in, other Sarah comes out, which is very like Scooby-verse. And then, um, and then I let the girls play because so much I think of directing is like allowing room for play and for improv. And so we're dollying right and like the um, action was to investigate. So the, and so the girls are creeping around and we land on Sarah Gilman and she's on the ground searching for her glasses. And it wasn't something that was scripted, but it was something that as, as an actor was such a smart choice because it is such a big part of like the Scooby-Doo world is Velma losing her glasses. So we were able to pick that up on screen. Now we have Daphne and Velma here and this is how they met. Is this gonna be a new version of these two characters? This is definitely a new version of these two characters. I think that they're much more complicated, they're much more flawed, they're much realer, and there are so many laughs to be had with these girls. Um, and they both just have an edge that I think people will, will be attracted to. I think Daphne is diverse. That's different than the original. Um, and Velma isn't just a nerd. She's someone who's an outsider with an edge. Um, so I think I think people are going to be in for a real treat with the film coming out May 22nd. That's the next day for a few months from now. And over here, I see, I see her with the cell phone, and we did not see that back in the 1960s. <laughs> uh, what more technology of today will we see in this movie? Well, they're floating hoverboards, so that's pretty cool. We have a, um, a couch that's in beta testing that pushes the girls together when they have an argument. They're pushed together by this couch. So that was really fun and funny. There are over, there are around 400 VFX shots in the film. So there is a lot of technology and tech. There's a laser spider sequence, which is pretty exciting. We have a sequence where the girls have clothes that morph to their background. So that's pretty fun. Um, there's just, it's a school that's filled with technology and built on the premise of like innovation and creating technology. So. There's, there's like a, there's a robot called Timothy Bot, and so he constantly is talking and giving his opinion. There are a lot of talking robots in the film. <laughs> so. Now, my last question about the technology. If you saw the characters of back then seeing this technology now, what would they say? Radical dude. <laughs> Do you have Jeez. Jeepers. That's what they'd say.
Do you have any closing comments? <laughs> um, no, I just I hope people check it out. I think it's a really cool, fun world. Tweet about it. Hashtag Daphne and Velma. I, I'm really in love with it, and I hope other people love it as much as I do. I believe I have here today. Alex Davis from Blue Ribbon Content. And Peter Girardi. How are you two doing today? Doing good. Really well. Thank you. <laughs> now, what brings you here to C2E2 today? Oh, that's right. We have Daphne and Velma. That's coming out in the next few months. <laughs> Tell us more about that. Well, Daphne Velma is a story of the two iconic characters from the Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated team, and it's the, a live-action version of when they first got together, when they first became friends. Mm -hmm. And it's a story, it's, it's just them. It's the two girls taking charge and, and leading the journey. No Freddy, no Shaggy, no talking dog, just the two young women. Now, tell us the uh, production process of this movie. Well, uh... First was the casting, and Alex could talk a little bit about the casting. Alex spent a long time with Jen Tisdale, our producer, really trying to find two young, new kind of representations of these characters. So, Yeah, two women that embodied what our uh, amazing writers, Kyle Mack and Caitlin Mears, wrote, which is a new version of Daphne and Velma, two strong, smart women. Um, and what we were looking for were two characters that embodied that as individuals. And I think we found amazing actors and young women in Sarah Jeffrey and Sarah Gilman. They both walked into the room and you knew right away that this was your Daphne and Velma. They are passionate, they are smart, they are funny, and they have amazing chemistry together. So once that came together, we just knew everything else was gonna fall into place because this is their movie, they had great chemistry, and it, it, the production process was wonderful because of it. Now, do you have any funny stories with uh, people you worked with uh, for this movie? Any funny stories about people we worked with? Um, yeah, Sarah Gilman is quite the jokester, and every time we would yell cut, she would just continue scenes and start making up her own rules. I mean, it's the bloopers are quite enjoyable to watch, but I would recommend those, checking those out on the DVD. You, have you know you have a fun set. I mean, we've worked <laughs> on enough projects that, first of all, you can't manufacture chemistry between actors, so right away, the two Sarahs had such great chemistry. And the first footage that we came back and saw, because Alex was on set, I was not. I was back in the office, and we would see footage coming through, and we knew, like, wow. You could try really hard to get that to happen, but if it happens naturally, it's fantastic. Yeah. And then you know if the set is that lively and fun, and there's bloopers, and people are having a good time, that you have something really special. So That's very good. <laughs> now, I'll tell me your favorite scenes that you guys uh, produced. I love the scenes that, I come from the world of animation, that's how I got my start. So I love the scenes that lean a little bit on that kind of heritage of Scooby, where, you know, it's, it's the romp that we call it in the animated universe, where there's like a song playing and they're running around, like going between doors and stuff like that. So you can't totally bring that to live action, but we can put an homage together. So there's a lot of scenes like that, which I appreciate. And I, our director, Susie, did a great job of translating those, and our writers as well. How about you? Uh, I love this scene. There's one scene of the girls sitting on a, uh, it's, we call it a conflict couch. They're having a little tiff and are being forced together quite literally by the couch. And it's just amazing to see the two of them coming together and these two characters coming together at such a deep level and really establishing a strong friendship in such a short amount of time. I, I just, I love it. When you uh, guys got Sarah for the role, what was the first few things she said when you were uh, going for the casting call? The Sarahs? Yes. Um, well, I was not personally in the room. Uh, Jen Tisdale was, but I think what they told me is that they both expressed how much joy they get from Scooby-Doo and how much they love Daphne and Velma and felt so lucky to be reading for two characters that are wholly three-dimensional and different that they could get behind as young women for, yeah. in a movie, for young girls. Yeah. You, I mean, the Scooby-Doo franchise, it's been on the air in some form or another since 1969. So it clearly is has some magic to it. And I think they were very excited to inhabit these roles and evolve them and kind of move them forward. Because the one thing we did say right away was, look, we're not trying to do the old Velma and the old Daphne. It's like they have to evolve. We want them to be stronger, more three-dimensional characters. And also, this is a movie. It's not a 22-minute animated show. So they were excited, I think, to take that challenge on. 
and our writers did a great job of putting together a script that really kind of helped with that. I mean, it's, it was really there on the page from the yeah. beginning. Do you have any closing comments uh, for the movie? Because I know it's coming out in the next few months around May. It's coming out on digital, Blu-ray, and DVD, May 22nd. Wow, uh, so pitch, Alex. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I go see it. It's it's a great movie for young women that is really showing two women in a strong friendship and not being concerned with boys and two young women who are smart and powerful and can be in control of their own destiny. And I think it is such an important thing for young women to watch. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you all for coming on with the interview. Thanks, man.